Uh, welcome to our webinar about how to make a goalkeeper better in your team sessions. Uh, well, we're looking forward. We've got a lot of people uh, around the world watching us uh, this uh, afternoon. Um, what are we going to do? Uh, Dennis, uh, are you able to show us uh, the program of this webinar, please? Definitely, I yeah. can do right. that. I'm just going to share my screen and make it a little bit bigger so everyone sees what uh, I want to. There we go. Okay, there you are. Okay, so uh, what are we going to discuss? Um, during a session, what are the pointers for, the, for you, you as a trainer or as a coach? What you want to tell your goalie during the sessions, what goal will help them? Um, then we're going to talk about what scoring zones are there in a D. So it's also more realistic also for the goalkeeper to make their saves. Uh, we got key questions and pointers to start exercises. Uh, then we have the optimization of the drill for your goalkeeper. Um, we've been thinking that you can also make a, say that they can you can make a, a drill at home and send us. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so we can take a look after the, what you've been hearing that you, how you can do this. And at the end we have a Q and A. Yeah. Uh, so. I think it's going to be, say, one hour, one hour thirty. <laughs> I hope we'll see. We don't yeah. know. We, we, the whole, know. We, we got the whole weekend. We got the whole weekend. We never know. Yeah. We, in Holland, we even have until Monday. Call right. yourself. Oh, call it, yeah. Call King, yourself. Yeah, King's Day. Nobody's going to do anything. No. And, 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 yeah, yeah, King's Day. Yeah. So, okay. So we will we'll be busy until uh, Monday afternoon. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, okay. Let's start. Uh, the first one. The first picture you're going to show us. Yep. And that's the following, and this is what uh, we often see. Um, Sorry, I'm just gonna open it. Yeah, <laughs> uh, it's recording, uh, by the way. Yeah, it's okay. definitely recording. Okay, and that's uh, good for you all to know. Uh, we yeah. record everything, um, and because we record it, we also gonna uh, share this afterwards. So tomorrow somewhere, I'm gonna put it online, and we're all gonna. Uh, give you the link, yeah, uh, and you can look at it again. So you can make notes right now, but you can also do that tomorrow or later in the week. Or yeah, or Sunday, or Sunday, or Monday, or a King's Day, King's Day. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, this is something what we often see: uh, the lonely goalkeeper during the training sessions. Um, Standing there and uh, the, the coach, the trainer stops the exercise, explains something, the goalkeeper stands in his D at the goal box and he shouts, what are we going to do? And the, as a reply gets, just stop balls. And, uh, and then uh, the exercise starts and then the goalie is standing there and doesn't know what's going to happen. Um, we believe that it's very interesting that you... Uh, the moment you, you stop your drill or you start explaining the exercise, the drill, that you get the goalkeeper with the group so the, the goalkeeper understands the exercise and what all the, uh, the technical value is of the exercise, how, uh, what it can tell the, the, the defense, whatever. So be, be able to change this. Yeah. Yeah. And especially when you see it in, in the winter when the rain. You see the <laughs> dripping on the helmet. Nothing happened. He just stands there, and and then on and then the weekend he needs to perform perform very well. So get the goal goalie into the into the exercise. The moment you stop, you start explaining. Goalkeeper gets in, or the goalkeeper gets with the defense together and the offense gets together. So he has to be more a part of the sessions. Yeah. Do you want to add something to this? Yeah. Um, a lot of times, a drill starts somewhere at the, uh, in the middle of the pitch. Um, and that's why they also explain the exercise over there. And then it's a long run for the goalie. Yeah. Why not always explain the drill somewhere at the 23, yeah. 25? Yeah. So do it over there. You have overview of your entire half, half a pitch, because yeah. most teams train on half a pitch. Uh, on that part, and you can also better involve the goalie, and then it's just a small run, so meet in the middle. Yeah, 
yeah, so that it's more, it's, so that's, I think, a very important thing uh, to do. Uh, maybe some of you are already doing this. Uh, maybe it's, it's a, uh, an eye-opener, we hope. And, um, well, okay. Uh, now, um, we have the training session. We have a training session. Well, we, can, we can keep yeah. the, the, the very good no. people if you, if you, if you want to see you. No, know, it's okay. We can, uh, better can, they can see us. Um, uh, you, you're doing you're doing your drill and your exercise, and um, then you want to tell goalkeepers certain pointers so they can become better in the sessions. Um, there are several things that I think are important. Uh, one is going to be the focus with your eyes on the ball. So when there's a shot, a slap, a flick, or whatever on goal, they need to be focused. The, the eyes are on the ball and not somewhere else. So there's one. So at the moment they miss the ball, say, hey, come on, a little bit more focus with your eyes. This, this can be one. Uh, secondly, I think that uh, a goalkeeper is the best goalkeeper who stops all the stoppable balls. Definitely. Everything within his soul, if you put your arms like this, like, a, like a, almost like an eagle, everything... But, Within these arms, he can stop these balls. He's going to be absolutely brilliant. And you don't, you don't make a, a, a team will not become champion or win matches when they, when they make the ultimate save. And two minutes before the end of the match, that little bouncy wobbly ball just gets past the feet or just goes underneath the arm. So uh, tell them also that they need to focus on stoppable balls in their zone. And then they get more confident, and if they get more confident, they also will make the ultimate saves, and they make the winning saves. I think the stopper balls are the winning saves, and it, it doesn't. Um, I I often say that the stopping the stoppable ball is for the medal, and the ultimate save is is for the stands. Yeah, yeah. So everybody goes, great save, great save. Uh, but I think, but nobody sees how difficult it is to stop all those stoppable balls in your zone. And uh, I think so, so the eyes, the focus, stopping the stoppable balls, or maybe even the rebound of that one. Yeah. Uh, furthermore, I think if you want to do uh, create this in your with your goalkeeper, it's very important that they keep balance. I think they always need to stand with the balance on two feet. And we, we as goalie coaches often say it's better to stand in balance on the wrong position than moving in the best position. And keeping your balance at that moment uh, gives you the chance to stop the stoppable balls. You can get you got good focus, there's no guessing, you can stand there, wait, wait, and when the ball is in the, uh, just underneath the crossbar, you say, beautiful shot. Yep. Yeah. But moving, moving and stopping shots, it's, it's the lottery, man. And at the end, the casino always wins. Now, what I always tell my goalies um, is when they are on the right side of the goal, so the left side is more open, yeah. uh, but they know I have to move a little bit more to my left to be in a good position, yeah. um, but then they move when the shot is coming. They can forget about the entire side on their right side. Yeah. Uh, so maybe they have a little bit bigger chance on the left side, but that right side, maybe the 40% of the goal, gone. Yeah. You can't stop it at all. Yeah. When you stand still a bit more to your right, then maybe that side is harder. So maybe the last 10% is really that ultimate yeah. safe. Yeah. But all the other 90 is stoppable. Yeah. Yeah. And then we, this, this again, the second point we have. Yeah. 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 Definitely. Stop the stoppable balls. Yeah. And you can only stop stoppable balls if you're in balance, setting on time. Yeah, yeah, I'm there. Okay, so we've got the eyes, we've got the stoppable balls, and we have setting on time in balance. And then the next uh, uh, point we can, you can coach with them is that they need to make a choice. Or you stay on the line, or you get out of the goal box, and you, you, you start sliding, smothering. But, but if you hesitate, you're yeah. dead. Yeah. Yeah, it's like in the car, or you stay stick in lane, or you go crossover. Yeah. But the moments of hesitating is not okay. And we're talking here about 
make him go to bed or in a training yeah, session. Yeah, in a training session. So what not I in the, thought, not no, in the <laughs> but I then tell them, um, and also the coaches I work with, uh, I don't mind which choice they make, as, as long, long as they make a choice. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so the goalies that hesitate, yeah, they don't learn anything. If a goalie makes the wrong choice, they still learn something. Yeah. Yeah, that it was the wrong choice. And then as a coach, you say, can you yeah, see? Yeah, well tried. Yeah, you will try, but in this case, you can, you can just say better on the line in your goal box. Yeah. Yeah. And the only way we said is you, learning by experience, making yeah. mistakes. Yeah. Okay, so we have making choices. So we have the eyes, stoppable, balance, making choices. Then we have the PC. And that's important also for, for as a coach. Uh, I think... Um, uh, the worst thing you can tell a goalkeeper is that uh, you tell them the first ball they always play on your stick side low. Then it, the monkey on the on the shoulder is talking oh, stick side low. So already leaning downwards and the ball goes in. So it's uh, you can't read the the body language or the stick movement of a of a of the drag flicker. So and that's so you need to wait till the the release of the ball. On a, on a drag flag, of course, and then you can make your save. And when yeah. is it? And then again, stop your stoppable balls. That's important. With the same with shots, you get out of the goal box, and the moment you see that the ball's been the hit, then you go down, and then you start logging. Yeah. And not just log and be a piece of meat and hit, and then they maybe they start flicking. Now we, we talked a lot about this last week, huh? Yeah. Uh, and one of the things Kiki said, and I, I thought it was a really important thing, uh, and David also said something about it, um, is when you are on a higher level, you have some information of the opponent team already. So you know, okay, that person can do this, that person can do that. Uh, but you can also do that in the preparation of your match. And most of the times the goalie itself is doing the preparation. So as a coach, you can then see, okay, they have this and this options, but it's up to you. You, you have to look for yourself and then react. And if you really say, oh, I saw them doing this and this and this, so probably the ball will go there. Yeah. I think that's a no-go. Yeah. Because uh, what you sa said, then the monkey on the shoulder, you start to leaning and then yeah. you're definitely on the wrong foot. Definitely. And, and I think already leaning towards yeah. the right position. Yeah. yeah makes it harder to go to that. That's just the casino again. Yeah. The casino. Yeah. So, but it's also that then you, if you want to make a goalkeeper also better in the PC, you need to train the PC with the defense. And you need to make your goalkeeper responsible for the organization. Yeah. And that means also that he needs, he wants also that his postman is being trained. Every Friday, 10 or 20 balls, he gets out of the goal box and he can let the ball go and then the postman can train the balls yeah. on it or maybe with, with, with the switch in the other corner, whatever. So train your goalkeeper with the, the whole defense uh, on the Friday or on the, whatever on the Thursday, depends on what, you, what your training looks like. Yeah. And if you, if you don't train that, you, you must not uh, think that they can make winning uh, saves in a PC. Yeah. If you don't train with them. Yeah. Yeah. That's also what I hear a lot. They they say, yeah, my goalie should stop more balls in the PC. We let in a lot of balls, uh, and I train with them the PC itself, the flick or the hit yeah. a lot, so they know what to do. <coughs> but because they don't train the entire defense, it's, you do it with five, not just with one. Uh, and because they don't train that. Still, the goalie has to be responsible for everything because they know the rest of the defense will screw up. They won't do their jobs. Uh, and then it's really hard. So it's a really important thing to, to work on and yeah. to make your team better. Yeah. It's really important, PC. Yeah. And, and also that they know that for, for the, say, for the, the second, second runner, second wave, and, uh, and the third, and that they know for what they're responsible of, for which zone. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. And, yeah. So that's that we have that one one of our webinars we have them yeah, and yeah. so that's you can you can you can look it back uh, and then I think um, and something will be also hear a lot is that coaching coaching of the goalkeeper um, in matches that they are too quiet but it all starts that they start coaching 
uh, the, the defense in the training. And it's important that they need to know that uh, at, until what position of the ball or the ball carrier, until where do they coach? And we often say that the moment the ball can get into the D, you're not allowed to coach anymore. Because then you have to focus on your, pr uh, your, your first task as a goalkeeper, and that's stopping balls. Yeah. And, and you can't, when the ball is in the D and you're coaching, and saving balls, that's, that's multitasking. No yeah. way, no way. So uh, they, they coach the position more uh, outside the D, maybe with, uh, with small games where you, they need to. Um, but that's what we, uh, what we often tell them. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and it has to be, uh, and, and the coaching has to be uh, not be aware behind you. And then they start looking behind them. So it has to be the name and it's a, a one step to your forehead or one step to your backhand or to... Uh, so it's task. A task. Yeah. Clear task. Clear task. Yeah. And again, it's better to say something stupid than being quiet. And you know, and it's also the younger the, the goalkeeper, the less easier they... they, they coach because it's they are a little so little afraid to coach yeah and some goalkeepers it's also their personality that they're more quiet than the others definitely yeah and uh so it's but they but i think a good goalkeeper needs to help uh the defense and that's also what we often see is that they also then start coaching when the ball is at the other side of the pitch and it's only noise coming out of the helmet. Yeah. And when nobody the ball, understands. Yeah, nobody listens. And then the moment that they they are really telling something very important, they don't listen anymore because it's too much noise. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. What I tell my uh, goalies and coaches and the teams I work with is that I uh, it is really hard when you are young and you want to start coaching. Sometimes a goalie really wants to, but uh, they stop with it. And that's also something I hear. So I, I tried it, but I stopped with it because nobody was really listening to me. Yeah. And I think there, the coach or the trainer is really important in that part. And uh, to not only help your goalie and say, hey, you have to start coaching. Now also tell your entire team, hey, the goalie, but then with a name, of course, um, is going to coach and is going to start coaching because they are the last person in the team and they see it from the back. They see it the best from all. Uh, so please start listening to him or her. And uh, so it's two ways. It's not only telling the goalie to start coaching, but also telling the team to really start listening. Um, and when that happens, and it just has to be one person out of the team that suddenly reacts to what the goalie is saying and thought, Hey, damn, this was useful. Yeah. Uh, and then, it will spread around the team. Yeah, uh, and then, then the moment the goalie says, hey, hey, well done, buddy. Hey, that's good. Then, yeah. you, then you're there. And I think also that the moment that you, when we were talking at the beginning, that you need, when you, we gather with the group yeah. to explain the exercise, that's also the moment that you can ask the goalkeeper, hey, uh, do you have something to add to the exercise for your defense? Yeah. And uh, the, do they listen very well to your, co to, uh, to your coaching? And it's and it's so easy, and it's yeah. and then it feels also more a part of the, the 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 team process. Yeah, and I can see why this is going wrong a lot of times. Uh, not only the, this coaching thing, but involving the goalie, and hopefully that is why uh, a lot of people like you are uh, looking and listening to this, uh, because I think it's hard to involve the goalie, and I can see why because. A lot of coaches, team coaches, used to be an outfield player and have no knowledge of the goalie. So it's better to say nothing than say something wrong. A lot of coaches think, think and hear. Because uh, that's also what I hear from the coaches. Yeah, I, I, I'm sorry, but I just don't know what to say. Yeah. So I better not say anything in there. You are, you are the goalie coach. So you tell to them what to do, right? Yeah, but you uh, have a very nice thing uh, would help them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I think what is 
the most easy thing to, to do as a coach, you have no knowledge needed for it, is to walk up to your goalie if you see something is going wrong and just ask the goalie, hey, what do you think is going wrong right now? And most of the times the goalie do know, uh, at least I hope so, because we tell them what to do, uh, or a goalie coach tells them what to do, and then just ask them, what, what do you think went wrong? And then the goalie makes, most of the times, yeah, tells you something. They have the idea that you're helping them, and actually you are helping them because you, you, yeah, you let them think about it, uh, and then you have something to coach at them as, yeah, because uh, they already gave you the answer. Um, so that's a, just asking your goalie, hey, what is going wrong? Instead of saying, hey, you have to stop more balls. Um, so just ask them to help them out. And that's a really, really easy thing. And everyone can do it on every level. Every coach can do this and still help out their goalie. Yeah. I think and, and by the way, uh, a goalie has also a name. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And we often see them and say, hey, goalie. And if you can remember the name of your forward, you can also remember the, the name of the goalkeeper. Yeah. It's, it's we have one question in the middle. We're not yeah. going to do this all the time. Yeah. But this, okay. is, this is something yeah. about this topic. Yeah, nice. Um, okay. So when it's appropriate to speak with the goalkeeper in a team session to give feedback? Is it every time you stop and talk to your outfield? Or is it less, uh, is more with goalkeepers because they get too much information at once? Um, I think it can be every time you stop the exercise for the entire team. Yeah. Um, you can talk to your goalkeeper or ask them, uh, but you can you do can do it in group with the entire group, or just walk up to the goalie when you're collecting balls. Yeah, um, doesn't have to be all the time, of course. But but, yeah, but it's, I think if you have exercise with, with like with offense against defense, and you yeah. you stop the exercise and you say you obviously say against your uh, offense, okay, guys, gather, uh, make a plan, and yeah. then. Defense is there, goalkeeper is there. There's also a nice moment that you go first to your offense, then you go to your defense. He asks, hey guys, how are you doing? Uh, how, uh, go, go, how, how are they doing? Do you have some, uh, Peter, you got something for your goalkeeper? What do you think? Has he saved more on the line? Or he, does he need more, uh, do you hear the, the, the goalie coach? Yeah. So it's, a, it's more the interaction. Yeah. You need to stimulate it also in the, in the, in the, in the sessions. I think what you say over there is that when a defense gets together with the goalie there as well, and then ask the goalie, hey, um, how do you think it's going? Probably they uh, there to talk a little bit more than to shout it over the entire pitch. Yeah. Uh, and then maybe the def defenders think, hey, what he or she has to say is yeah. quite useful. Yeah. Uh, maybe I should start listening as well yeah. <laughs> when we are doing the drill. Uh, so help them in that as well. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Okay. Um, I hope this part is, uh, is clear. Okay, now uh, we're going to the next part. And it's not about every time we're not going to talk about the drills, what you're going to do. I want to, we want to give you... Uh, that is this, uh, yeah, that one. And then um, um, if you look, if you have the D and you've got the gold box, and we have a uh, schedule where during the last World Cup, most goals are scored. And this part of it here at the top. No, just make it a little bit smaller. No, so this, well, this is okay. one is bigger. Yeah, this one is okay. We have yeah. this one. That's right. Yeah. Uh, this, um, this, you can see it over here. This is where the goals in the D were scored, all goals, the left one. Yeah. And you see that the bottom part, the green part, there are the most goal scored. The goal scored. Yeah. 30 over here. Yeah. Stick side low. Yeah. 20% of all the goals where the feet of the goalie should be. Yeah. And 22 on the left side low. Yeah. And, uh, without, and without nine yards, you can see it's uh, less down the center because you've got, got more time. Yeah. Um, so again, what I said, the players 
you can see that players um, they always go for the top. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, for the for the stands. Yeah. That the stand will cheer, but you can see that if you want to go for the medals, that that the balls are more low on the on the feet. That means also if you if the if you as a coach start telling them and realize and then the goalkeeper will get less hit less also because they all want to score high and with this percentage it's useless to score high and why is why is this uh, percentage of the low ball so high because of graffiti because your feet are just glued to the ground of the graffiti and your hands are free yeah. to move and that's why the low balls are more difficult for a goalkeeper than the high shots. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and do you want to have a goalkeeper performing well with a lot of confidence and you've got your exercises and they try to score every time high and every time he's got uh, hits on his chest guard, the helmet or the arms, uh, the confidence goes away and uh, he gets more scared. And that's something what you don't want. And you can see now with the percentage uh, of the of the of the uh, down under, that you will get more goals in your training sessions. You score more; they will score more in the, in in your in the, in the matches. Yeah. Your goalkeeper get more realistic shots, and uh, you will get hit less. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, you want to add something to this? Um, yeah, it's also I started being a. Um, uh, not, I, don't, I don't want to say professional goalie, but I, I started thinking about it more uh, when I got in contact with you. And I was about 20, 20 21. Uh, and when I was an 11 year old goalie till 15, I, I was king on high balls. And I have no idea why. I just thought I have really quick hands uh, until I saw these stats. And I, oh, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, all young goalies, almost all the young goalies, they, they think high balls are more fun. Uh, they are better at it, and that's why they also think it's more fun um, in relaxed goalie sessions. But if it goes into a, a training session and one of the players starts dribbling into the D, one more meter, one more meter, one more meter, close to the P spot, boom, hit it high, then they don't think it's fun anymore. No, no. Um, but and you not also see that it's not happening in the match. No. Uh, you almost never score over there. And that has to do with other things that we will discuss later, but you also don't have that time over there. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, I think it's really, really nice stats, this. Uh, and we're also going to add it uh, later on. You will yeah. see it uh, uh, tomorrow as well. Yeah, this is all goes from everywhere in the D. Yeah. Almost all low. And when they uh, are not, this is the nine yards is just close to the goal. So when yeah. they're a bit further away, they hit fast in the low corners. Yeah. And, uh, but then it's interesting, the next uh, clip, uh, the picture that is going to show you is where the most goals are being scored in what from. Yeah. from. Take a look at this. And, and, not, and even in this, uh, the, they say the middle left and the middle right is mostly more to the outsides. Can you, can you point with, the, with your mouse to the uh, and It's in another, yeah, there the, more on the outsides than, yeah. than down the center. Even. And this area, this is almost down. never. Yeah. And to be honest, if we uh, take a look at our uh, sessions often, mm -hmm. uh, like, uh, uh, if you if we, can you show the next one with the with the no goal song? Are you able that from um, uh, with the from uh, sport session planner? Oh yeah yeah yeah. I have it. Yes, let me go here. Mm. Yeah, there we are. Okay, um, it's a little delay. <laughs> uh, we often see when you get the no-go zone, we often see that exercises finish in that zone yeah. or even in the center, two steps more to the P-spot and then they shoot on goal because, but there is, is, is almost never a chance to shoot in a match on goal. 
I hope. Yeah, yeah but if, if you get every time a chance over there, your defense sucks. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, Sorry yeah. about the word, but that's, yeah. But often we see the exercise end up in that zone. Yeah, definitely. And that's so weird. Not on the low level, but even on the higher levels, they, yeah. they do it like this. Yeah. So if you go back again to the, to the, 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 uh, to the stats, the stats we had, um, then I should do it here. Yeah. Yeah, there we are. Um, I wonder if, uh, how often you as a trainer on the pitch thinks of the ending zones, if you see where the scoring zones are over here. And um, I want to ask, I, no. give, I please give a uh, reply on the question. Do you think very well where you want to end, in what zone you want to say, in the scoring position of your players, and what do you, de what do you demand from your goalkeeper that the, your, uh, that, they, that the defense has to do to uh, avoid a goal, goal, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Because in this stats, yeah, uh, I think at the end, I want to end up in the nine yards. Yeah. Because there I got the biggest chance to score. And you saw all, almost all low balls are goals. Yeah. So, so question, do you train on these zones? Please reply. Uh, is the question open? Yeah, 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 yeah. everything's open. Uh, but nobody uh, replied yet. Not yet. So just let us know if you, if, if you even think about this. Yeah. And it's not um, that if you don't think about it, it's wrong and we it's don't not talk to you anymore. It's not, not about good or bad or anything, but it's more that... Ah, ah. So, who that? Who, who? Uh, yes, in long corner and circle entry, but not in open sessions. Jonathan, yes, particularly for deflections close in. Uh, sometimes, but not enough. Yeah, that's a fair question, a fair answer. Yeah, yeah, yeah because and that's that's very. A lot of coaches don't, and that's what I said already. A lot of coaches used to be an outfield player, and they think as an outfield player, and what's important, what's nice for an outfield player. Yeah, and, and let's think. It is not that we say never hit from the top of the D. No. Because if you do a warm-up drill, like say after warm-up and you're going to hit some balls like yeah. and the goalie is already a little bit uh, warmed up as well, it's, I know from my perspective, it's really nice for a goalie to get some shots at goal. Not from the top of the D, a little bit from an angle, just in the D and hit on goal. It's for everyone really nice and you get warm, you make some saves, you feel yeah. good and then you go into... Yeah, because even if you, sh if you, get, if you uh, get shots... From uh, the top of the D, and Dennis, can you aim uh, with your mouse on the uh, gray line on the outside there, and on the other side, please, over there. If if the, if the players end up in that that zone and they are allowed to yeah. shoot on the goal, then the angle to the goalkeeper will be uh, uh, smaller. Yeah. So he has more chance in stopping balls. Yeah. And the moment he has more chance in stopping balls, his confidence will grow it will get, become a better goalkeeper. And attackers need to put a little bit more effort in it to be able to score. Yep. And it's really easy if they do it from uh, this part. If yeah. they do it from this part, it's really easy to score. But if they do it from this part, they really get better. And that's something we talked about it this morning. Um, a lot of teams are really good when they go towards a circle, they have a plan. Yep. But as long as they enter the D, they have a hard time scoring. And we said it's, it has to do with this one. They only practice at hitting from top of the D. And most of the times when there's a good defense in front of them, they cannot do what they trained. Um, and they suddenly have a, a defender in front of them. Yeah. So there's pressure. So, so if you show your goalkeeper uh, these statistics, what do you think that the goalkeeper will do? He will directly... Uh, coaches defense to the far left and to the far right zone and just let them shoot. Yeah. 
You, when you can see the, the, the percentage over there, those six are the, the tomahawks, the tomahawks of, uh, of uh, Camperman, or these guys that they go in and they bang them in. Okay, yeah. yeah. Okay, but so for the goalkeeper, they, he knows that he, he doesn't want the ball anymore in the nine yards. Yeah. So he, tr he needs to know that and he needs to coach his defense in such a way and position his defense in such a way that the nine yards are more uh, close. Yeah. And yes, of course, you as an offense, you try to get in there and you as a defense and there's a responsibility partly also of your, of your goalkeeper, to get the ball out of that uh, nine yard. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, so the, what we often see, the, the, say the, those nine yards, is that the situation is that they like they enter the, the back line from the offense from the right side, if you go with your mouth or there, and then what they often do is from there, they get the ball into or 90 degrees over there and they play and then the, over there, the, your, the defense will be positioned and the offense will try to play a little deflection or whatever. Yeah. And uh, for that situation, the goalkeeper tries to stay at the near post as long as possible over there. And only when they enter the first line, the, his first mark, that one, no, that's the second. That one, yeah, that one. The moment they enter that part, then then the goalkeeper is allowed to get off the third near post and put pressure, depending where also the other defend, uh, defenders are positioned. Yeah. And the difficult part on this one is is that uh, every situation is different yeah. because the moment somebody's got a lot of speed is that's it, totally different then somebody slows down yeah. and, and then everything will change. I think what is most annoying for a defender and for a goalie as well is when an attacker goes into here, this, something else, uh, goes into here and not speeds up, but speeding up, they have their head towards the ball and it's easy to surprise them with a tackle yeah. or a goalie going out. Now to slow down over there. Mm. And protect the ball. Yeah. That's so hard for a defender. Yeah. Um, so, um, yeah, that's something to stop for top now, think. Yeah. Something to think about. Yeah. Uh, so, so, so you can see that for the position of the goalkeeper, uh, it's important that he knows where he has to put, uh, he needs to coach his defense, put pressure, so he has uh, uh, less chance to conceive a goal. And that's directly you can see far left, far right. Yep. Isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, any questions on this, please? Fire. Yeah. Shoot. Don't hesitate to send us a note. Um, I have one. Ah, stop it now, thank you. Thank you. Something to think about. Yeah. Or do you know the, the proper English translation to stop it now, thank you? Um, hopefully they're typing really long questions now, or they don't have questions at all. Is everyone clear? That's also a good answer. Yeah. Uh, then we go on to a uh, next topic. Ah, Jeroen, uh, what do you think about goalkeepers who intercept an assist? I think that's a good question for next week to go in to depth. Yeah. Uh, so then we have that about decision making. Um, I, I think a lot of goalies go in for an assist because they don't really trust their defenders in front of their goal. If the defenders, you, you talked about the, um, the example of Davy Hart, he almost never goes out of his at, goal. At Campo. Yeah, at Campo. Yeah, yeah, at Campo. Yeah, yeah. Campo. Uh, That's different than with the Irish. Yeah, team. yeah, definitely. That he trusts his defenders so well, and the defenders know exactly what to do, and they actually do it, yeah. um, then he can stay on his post. So he will stay perfectly over here, they run in, and playing the ball on goal is yeah. no option. But playing the ball in front is also no option because everyone is so well marked. Um, so that is not necessary. And they do it most of the times because they know if it goes in front of the goal, I have a hard time because then it's in my nine yards and then I have a hard time stopping it. 
so that means also that you can practice this very very well and then you can stop the exercise and say okay stop stop okay go to what do you want where do you want to have your defender yeah okay here 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 is your here is your striker where do you want to position your defender what zone do you want him to be covered and that's his task and, and then he can uh, coach his defense he, he doesn't have to coach his defense anymore because when the ball is that close he needs to focus on sa on saving uh, saving balls yeah but the defense needs to know exactly with you as a coach uh, where to position and the moment you can enter a stop okay where are you positioned and a lot of time they're ball focused yeah and the goalkeeper needs to be ball focused because he can't look at the ball and see what's happening behind him no. he needs to yeah. trust his defense definitely yeah and a lot of questions that come in are, are from coming into the baseline um yeah and what to then should i go out should i not um because i'm, I'm saying it's you already said it, it, it is a big thing a really hard thing uh to train and but i think the easiest is to to communicate with everyone about it and let your goalie tell the team what he or she wants yeah and if the goalie has no have a clue yeah tell it as a coach it's then it's your job uh to give examples okay we can do this we can do this uh but that is clear for everyone and that a goalie can yeah can make it true because uh, yeah if you the moment you have a goalkeeper who is who's very who, who likes to get uh, likes to get out of the goal box and he goes first directly towards the player on the back line it's fine but then he needs to trust that everything is so well organized behind him that he can go for the ball yeah and that's something that you you that that, that the goalie needs to discuss with you as a coach and with his defense yeah definitely and this is you know just because of the different style and the different personalities of goalkeepers. Yeah. And uh, that's the way it is. Definitely. Yeah. All the options a goalie has, we're gonna talk about it more uh, in another webinar about yeah. decision making. We can also call that the nine yard zone. Yes. Yeah. It is all yeah. the decision making in the nine yards. So the other question that we already, uh, that we see over here, uh, perfectly fit in that webinar is yeah. uh, about uh, when to put out, uh, go out, when not. Yeah, well, to go, to, go uh, to leave the field, your first post, it will uh, always be the moment they, uh, that they enter uh, the second mark or the first mark of the goalkeeper. Yeah. But do you have a goalkeeper who's often quickly off the line? It's fine that he can, when he's halfway, say halfway, that, that then he comes out of the goal box, but then he needs to trust and you need to practice with the goalkeeper in your defense that every that every zone is covered yeah otherwise it's suicide yeah and it's just going out because yeah. you think i have to go out yeah no. and it's yeah i will talk about it in a yeah. next yeah. week yeah. webinar because yeah. then this then we can fill one half hour with this yeah yeah but that's it's good. more important that they know that but that's that's the 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 the, the, the coachable part of the goalkeeper yeah. that you need to uh, uh the moment that this happened stop put everyone down said okay you want to go out where do you want to have your defender what zone do you want to cover you have not think position but in zones yeah and you're not allowed to be ball focused yeah you need to feel every time where your striker is as a defender little little bit of hey pull in. hey <laughs> yeah i hope that that covers your question um, how do you change the constraints for alpha players to bring out certain behaviors in the goalkeeper? Mark asks. Again? How do you change the constraints for alpha players to bring out certain behaviors in a goalkeeper? It's a question of Mark. Um, I don't exactly understand the question, to be honest. Um, can you rephrase it maybe, Mark? Uh, how do you change? Maybe if you rephrase it, Mark, we can uh, we can answer it. We don't quite understand what you mean with this. Otherwise, we. Uh... Uh, 
Okay. Uh, we can answer it uh, later. A bit later. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. Just put write it down, Mark, and we come back at it later. Okay. Um, okay. Then, then the moment that you um, you're going to do some exercise and you want to uh, improve the level of your goalkeeper in an, in your training session, there are several key questions or pointers uh, you need to ask yourself before you do the exercise. I, the first thing is, why do I want to do the exercise? What is the main thing of it? Um, what's the goal of the exercise for the goalie, for the defender, and then also for your, for your strikers? Yeah. So you need to think very smartly the why. Yes, yes, yeah, the, the guys love it. Yeah, those exercises have to be done also. But if you want to improve the level of your goalkeeper, your defense, these are the main questions you need to ask. Why? What's the goal of the exercise? How shall I start the exercise? We often see that you can say, I'm going to play the ball first to the goalkeeper. He brings the ball into the game and then it starts. Yeah. That can be done. Or you get the ball, you play the ball to the, to the left position at the left. He plays the ball to the goalkeeper, goalkeeper plays the ball in, and then it starts. These are things you can easily do and make it more interesting for the goalkeeper. Yeah. Um, uh, it can also be, how can I start it? I can also get start, start on the side or whatever. Um, then it's also, uh, where, where in what uh, zone do you want to uh, let the exercise in? What is the... And for the goalkeeper, in what ex uh, zone does do you like uh, your defense that they keep the ball? Because I think if you look again in the nine yards, that's, that's, that you don't want to end the ball in that zone. Yeah, definitely. Because then then you're you're done. So you try to get avoid that zone, or you, you, you don't try to get them from the, the, down the center, in the middle right or the middle left. You try to keep them always in the far right and the far left. That's what you always try to do. And then, uh, especially, uh, which technique um, do, 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 does, does the strikers require to, sh uh, to shoot a goal, what's match like a match uh, situation? It's like we have the three D. Can I sh shall I show it? Yeah, we got the three D. And let's let's go a little bit lower. Hey, the picture's getting dark. Oh, okay. Oh, that's really light. But this is what you mean, huh? Yeah. We got the top of the D. That's this one. Yeah, the white one. Then we have. The second D over there, and then we have okay. the nine yards. Nine yards. The nine yeah. yards. And I think in every uh, D, uh, you have a different way of shooting, slapping, hitting, or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Could you explain a bit about this? Yeah. Um, and that's what we already said a little bit earlier in the webinar is that uh, the closer you go to the goal, the more pressure there will be from the defenders, probably. Uh, well, there has to be. There has to be, yeah, hopefully. If because someone is shooting from here, uh, a, a defender can know, I can tap the ball, but this should be for the goalie. So there's oh. a little bit less pressure than... Okay, but, okay but talking about the goalie, so what is the main... Um, uh, if you, if you look at the goalkeeper yeah. and, you, and you get you get the shot on the, the first say the first d yeah yeah is it a, it's more a, a fast shot yeah the backhand tomahawk yeah. fast, fast slap yeah yeah, yeah okay so and it's also because they have some more time they have the time to put their shit, stick in the back of their neck and then hit it okay. so here they have less pressure um and but they so need to be. But they need, so the goalkeeper needs to be prepared for a fast shot. Yeah. It's the men, mentally they have to be there for the fast shot. There will be a shot. Yeah. They're not gonna slap it over there. Okay. Maybe some can, but most of the times it's not fast enough. Okay. Yeah. So if we look at the second D, 
There's more pressure from the defenders, so less time for the attacker. So a goalie should know, hey, this can be a, a bit faster movement, and maybe a wrist movement instead of a hit. Uh, it can be a slap, can be a fast push or something, out of the wrist a little bit more. So they have to be a little bit more prepared and differently re prepared than uh, when the ball is on the top of the D. Okay, so, so the question is, is if you have the first D and the second D, yeah. um, I think you'll have more time for saving shots everywhere from the top of the D, from the yeah. first D, and the moment uh, it gets one D more closer, you're more focused on the stoppable balls. Yeah. The biggest that was one of the points we had at the beginning. Yeah. Wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, definitely. Okay. And also, uh, and this is more a goalie mental thing, um, the closer the ball is towards your goal, um, you can also just be happy with just saving it. Um, yeah. And that's also, a, a, you can help out as a coach. Um, Tell your goalie sometimes that is when they just saved it, but they give away a rebound. If it's so close, they sometimes don't have another option. They just save the ball. And it's good as a coach to, to tell your goalie, try to give away as le least rebounds possible, so play them towards the side. But the closer the ball is towards the goal, it's just being happy with just the save. Yeah, I, I would say if, if, if the ball is in the in the... Uh, the first D, in the, in the balls in the, uh, no, no, in yeah. the, there. I think then you can demand from your goalkeeper to get, give a good rebound to the sides. Yeah, uh, the moment they get closer, so the second D, and then we have the third D, and that's the nine yards. I think the, oh, the most important thing is save it. Yeah, Just save, save it. it. And, and the higher the level, so if you have a goalkeeper, uh, the juniors, say, 14, 15 years, uh, they can say, if you're talking about David Hart, he or Manny Hinge or uh, Cortez or Sam van der Fen or you see Koenig, they are able to play the ball also under pressure to the side because they have the quality and the yeah. level. But don't be too demanding on rebound direction. No in the second and the third, and then the, 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 your, you need to train with your goalkeeper that uh, your defense will help him in clearing the ball. Yeah, definitely. And they turn, position, look at the ball, help the goalkeeper, and also um, give them the compliment even when they make those saves. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's a team effort. Yeah. If you save the ball as a goalie and it's a really good save from close range, then definitely your defense should help you to clear it. Yeah. yeah. And that's also something you need to train. Uh, so if you only train hits from top of a D, you will never train this, so it will never happen in the match. Yeah. And we often see that when the balls get into the second and the third, that uh, the players just, uh, they hit the ball, um, how could you say, very friendly, brainless on the goal. Yeah. Very hard. Uh, and the, the goal, goalies get hit on yeah. the arm, they get, and they, uh, they don't like the training anymore. And, and at that moment, it's important that you realize, if, we, if, we, if, you, if you remember the, the positioning where the goals was, the goal, most goals were scored were all uh, under. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I had, I had uh, um, we had a second goalkeeper and uh, he got hit several times from the P spot. Mm -hmm. And then he, when he did, somebody hit him, he took his helmet and he started running after the, the player and then it just, he just whacked him and he put it on his helmet and said, who's gonna be the first? Yeah. That's not, I can, can understand, but it's not ideal. No, it's not no. ideal, not ideal. No, but you can easily, with markers, put down these actually three Ds yeah. and, and train your attackers that if you are closer, your timing is less when there's a defender. So also practice here several techniques. Uh, it's much more match-like. Yeah. It is so also much more match-like for a goalie. A goalie will love it more because they have more stoppable balls. Um, and it's actually what you train for both ends. So for the goalie and for the attacker. Yeah. It's not only about scoring. So putting a stick in the neck when they are on six meters. Yeah, it's nice that you score, but it's not really hard or something. No, yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, because if you if you say if you you end up saying uh, uh, on the left side for us over in the in the second uh, D, and you have you over here and you got uh, a player on the second post, you got a player on the second post, you got a player on the on the first post, on the near post, and you got a goalkeeper. You like to sh shoot on goal, uh, play the ball wide or for for the second post, the near post for deflections. The goalkeeper has no chance. I can understand you want to practice it. Yeah. Yes, I understand. You can do this static, but the goalkeeper will, well, well he's just there, just, just a piece of meat. And then from there, you, you, you try to put positioning and then you, you want the goalkeeper to put pressure on the player, on the pass. You try to, you, you, your goalkeeper needs to realize that the, the, def the player behind him in the second post is marked. Yeah. And then you can be talking and coaching, otherwise, Stop, you stop the exercise. Okay, guys, what can we do better? And then you put everything in a better position and you can go back again. Yeah, definitely. 3 Ds, important thing to keep in mind. Yeah. So just an easy tool to use uh, for making a, ex a training session um, much more match, uh, match like. You don't even need to put defenders. Yeah, if you do it with defenders, it's much easy. But if you have a, just a shooting drill or uh, finishing on the goal, then already putting down these three Ds makes it already 10 times much more realistic than yeah. not doing it. Yeah, correct, correct. Okay, um, then from here, uh, by the way, questions, please. Are there any uh, questions? Yeah, Mark had... Um, ah. Mark has... Um, the slides you showed of the percentage of the goal scored, but uh, how many shots were made? Um, this is a percentage that is made over there. Yeah. So uh, we don't really have the stats of how many exact goals they were scored. How many um, shots were on goal, but it's more that from that, the, what they did, they, uh, they uh, clicked all the goals that had been scored in that zone. Yeah. But, we don't, we, but we don't know exactly from all the matches how many shots there were played yeah. in that part. So that's, so it's, it's yeah. Um, but wasn't it the uh, yeah? He also rephrased this uh, question before. You say you want uh, low saves, so you would make them shoot low. Harder examples uh, would be return to ready position. Um, how do you um, make your player shoot low? Uh, so they want to shoot high, but they, it's, I think it's an easy you make a match in between the goalie and the, uh, the attackers. With this in mind, of course, the three Ds. Uh, if they shoot on the backboards, they get two points. If they shoot in the net, they get yeah. one, only one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. If, if you, a goalie if, saves if, the ball, yeah, yeah, two yeah. points. If yeah. it's a low ball, yeah. it's a high ball. Yeah. Which in, is in, one. The, in the moment you really hit, you, you really hit the, the the goalie really bad, you lose your points. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. You can make yeah. you can make uh, make little matches out of it. Um, uh, and that makes it uh, makes it more fun. Uh, just shoot on the backboard, then you get more points. Yeah. Um, it's an easy one. Yeah. 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 Um, see. You. Um, Hein. I'm first gonna do it in Dutch, and then in uh, uh, I'll translate. We in the nine yards area. Ook gewoon hard afronden, net zo powerful en best situatief voor de keeper geen schiet gaat dan. Uh, no, because we just explained uh, there is no time in a match to shoot from there as fast as you do. In the nice yeah, yeah no way. normally from the top of the. If you have uh, a team that can do it on your goalie in a match, your defense, like you said, sucked. Yeah, then your defense wasn't right or it was just uh, outnumbered. But normally, in a normal situation where your defense is in position, there's no way somebody can shoot from there that fast. No, it's it's all in that that it is all about uh, uh, moving a little deflection. The ball, the goalkeeper gets out of the goal box with the arms low. The ball's been played over the shoulder. The goalkeeper is wrong-footed, goes through the through the pads. Um, I think um, if you, I think maybe three or four percent is a real shot. Yeah, and that's yeah. The rest is just small yeah. wrist movements. Yeah, backhands, deflections, little slaps. And if you um, try to look for on YouTube for uh, Ronald Brouwer, his goals. Yeah. 
uh, and see what type of goals he makes from close range. That are techniques that you, and that's the reason why he scored 200 plus goals in the Dutch team, uh, because he has the proper technique. He's not hitting from close range. It's all tiny movements. Yeah. And he once told me uh, that he did it on purpose, sometimes played the ball onto the goalie first, because then the goalie moved, was out of position, because of the rebound on the legs, he got it back, and then, boom, yeah. smacked it in the, uh, the other corner. Take a, take a look at Florian Fuchs. Yeah, same. Oh. It's all about in the in the in the uh, in the Dutch team G uh, Ginella Zerbo. Yeah. Everything is in all little movements, little shots. Yeah. And yeah, it's then, not that they don't hit balls and goal, but it's really first D. Yeah. Uh, Charlotte Vega, same. Yeah. She scored so many goals from close range, but yeah. she can really smack a ball from the top of the D. Yeah. Yeah. That's you, don't, you don't have really the time because there's. Yeah. For the goalkeeper, for the goalkeeper, he, uh, he needs to realize that um, uh, the player is also under pressure. You're under pressure, but the but they but the uh, but the player are also. Yeah. And this this your advantage, and and you often see that they get nervous, they start moving, and then that, that's the moment you want your goalkeeper to stay relaxed and just focus on the, all the balls that surround the feet, round the arms, and make those. Makes those saves, and when the ball is on the sideboard, great shot. Thank yeah. you very much. Yeah, because you don't have the time. Okay, but then uh, say we have an exercise. Uh, okay, you want to have, you want to give your uh, um, your go go goalie some more uh, confident, and then you can ch take two cones, and you can put two cones in the goal box. So easy, easy option. Yeah. And we have then where it is. Maybe we want you. Oh, it's probably over here. Oh, no, not here, here but uh, I'll open it. Yeah, you can keep on. Okay, I'll, I'll okay. So, so you can. Uh, uh, you want to have that he's got to be more focused on stoppable balls. That means that uh, all the balls that have been hit on the sideboard is out of his range. So, what we can try then? What happened? Your yeah, you, did, you didn't um, download it, okay. so I'll just do it like this. Okay, so it's all right. Okay, cool. Uh, so he, uh, so he can. Um, uh, what what we try then is you put down two cones um, in the goal, and let's say about uh, was this a half a meter, uh, 30, 30, yeah. 30, 30, 30, 30, 30 to forty centimeter maybe so from from the from the post. And uh, and the players need to score, try to score between the two cones. Yeah. And that means that the ball is always in the stoppable uh, uh, range of your goalkeeper. This is a nice way. If you do a first warm up, a first yeah. drill hitting on goal, and you want to warm up your goalie as well and let your players really aim for the goal yeah. instead of shooting everything wide, because yeah. then it's not a warm up exercise for yeah. the goalie anymore. Just put some cones in it, uh, so the goalie gets more confidence, yeah. feels great. They really need to aim. All the balls are going on goal because yeah. they have a smaller target. Yeah. Um, so it's actually it's a very win. good to do. It's in a the very game. nice win-win situation there. Yeah. It's yeah. very nice. They love it, and the goalkeepers can can stand there. Everything is in the soul. He feels comfortable, and then he gets much more easier in a flow towards the the, the final of your training. Yeah. It's, it's really love. Okay, and you can also do this again with a match in between the players and the goalies. Yeah. Put them down when you do a really match like exercise. Yeah. And score two points when you score it in between the uh, cones and one when it's outside. Yeah. And then when, they go, when there are two little balls going in, then you make, you, 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 you put the, the, the cones slightly more to the side. Yeah. Make it a little smaller the, between the post and the, and the, and the, and the cone. And you got more pressure. For the goalkeeper, the goals get a little bigger. Yep. And you can say every ball between you score between the two cones is, let's say, five points, and between the cone and the post is one point. Yeah, yeah. So yep. then you, you, then there's also directly a challenge between the players and the goalkeeper. Yeah. Okay. What also is uh, important to improve the level of your goalkeeper is the pace in the exercise. We often see that say that there are exercise from the left and from the right, 
and that the moment the goalkeeper is saving one ball, the other shot is almost <laughs> on the helmet. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and you know, I understand as a, as a you have a team and you want everything um, uh, going smoothly in a very nice pace and everybody's busy, but it has to be, the, the goalkeeper needs to have a chance to clear the ball and uh, we often say is that the goalkeeper needs to is, is allowed to follow the ball two seconds after saving the ball, and then he has to change to the other side, and then there has to be the other shot. Yeah. So otherwise, it's too fast between the first ball and the second ball. Yeah. And then the quality of the goalkeeper's uh, performance goes down. Your exercise is doing very well, but it's for the goalkeeper, absolutely useless. Yeah. Every ball is half half cleared. He mishits the ball. The ball is gets just under the kicker on his toe, or he gets the ball wrong on his protector or his pads. So try to get the pace in the exercise so well that the moment you can say the ball's been played into the D just before receiving, then the other side starts. Yeah. And then there's a nice flow also for your for your goalkeeper and shots on goal. If you think then um, your players are standing still too much, it's your job as a coach to do something about it. Yeah. But uh, it's not only about getting all those players busy, it's also keeping your goalie safe and getting it more, much more match-like yeah. situation. Because um, when you demand your goalie a shot from top of the D, that they really clear it and not giving away a rebound, you also have to give them the opportunity to train that in a training session. And if you whack balls in all the time, they're just busy with not getting hit uh, and just try to save all the balls, but they're never busy with really clearing the ball to the side like they want to. So you can demand it from them, but also train it then. Yeah. So give them the time. Yeah, and then uh, secondly, if you show me the no-go zone. Um, yeah. Ooh. yeah. Oh. Beep. The no go zone. The no go zone. Hello, zone. No. No, I don't know what one. No. What is that one? Hello. 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 No. What go up? So many open. The no. no. Yup. And there he is. Almost. Actually, Almost. Share. So much open. And share screen. Share screen, and there he is. There she is. There he is. Okay. Uh, what what I often do when I'm working also um, as in defense training that I put uh, I put markers in the no go zone, and um, and the moment the ball is not allowed to be played through the no go zone and is not allowed to be shot from there. You know what, I, I think he's still here, Thomas Imink. I heard from his team, yeah. uh, HBS, uh, his ma uh, first men's team, that they uh, also did this. Mm -hmm. uh, the defenders didn't want the, uh, the attackers to hit from there. Yeah. So if the defenders um, took a hit, so the attackers could hit from that zone, mm -hmm. uh, the defenders had to run a shuttle. Um, <laughs> oh. um, and I think they, they also had another rule but for... That, for or when the attackers couldn't go there. But that's a very beautiful task for the goalkeeper then in coaching that that to get that part totally covered. Yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah. Yeah, you don't want to shoot them from there because it's just yeah. fast. Yeah. It was a good shot. It was a good shot. Yeah, uh, yeah. From there, if you get a free shot for, uh, as a goalkeeper and they shoot the ball low, you've got no chance. Yeah. No chance, no chance. So the no goal zone, we had the 3D. Uh, what we often also uh, try to do also to get um, less, um, more pressure on the players and more quality in saving for uh, the goalkeeper is, is then the moment that they enter the D, that you as a coach you do a countdown. Yeah. That they need to shoot within three or four, so five, four, three, two, one, and then, then you don't have the pressure, you've got the defender, the, the, the goalie 
can coach his defender more closer, that's more pressure, and then it's easy. And then from there, what we often do is that then directly we put in a second ball. Yeah. You can throw the ball on the goalkeeper for the rebound, but you can also roll the ball a little further away so that the strike gets a second chance, so the goalkeeper gets more shots on goal. We often see is that this beautiful exercise, ball goes wide and they start all over again. Yeah. And then two little shots on goal and the heartbeat of the goalkeeper in these things stays very low. But the moment you get roll and ball, shot and goal, roll and ball, shot and goal, and then we start the next exercise again. There's a lot of nice pace in the exercises. I heard a really good Spanish coach talk about this. Andreu Enrich. Yeah. Um, he said something quite recently about goalies in big uh, uh, matches. So if it's an 8-on-8, eight eight, 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 not between three, yeah. three yeah. and they have a lot yeah. to do because it's close yeah. range. But let's say an 8-on-8, eight eight, yeah. you have to keep the goalie busy as well, not only the players. Uh, and a big exercise of a half a pitch and they shoot it wide or they, the la the last reception is wrong. Uh, then indeed, make sure there's someone else throwing the ball onto the goalie or another ball into that attacker, that there's still something to do for the goalie. And he says, um, almost no coach thinks about his or her goalie. Uh, and that's really stupid. That's re his exact words. It's really stupid. Um, and it is so easy to do it um, by throwing in another ball or when you do an 8v8, give the goalie another task. If like what? Like what? It could be just uh, focus on uh, your counter, it's a, a counter defense, and so make sure everyone is in this, uh, the right position to when your team loses the ball, that they're in the counter cover. Uh, that can be a good thing. You also let them talk already. Um, it can be that every ball starts at the goalie. Yeah. So just throw uh, throw in a ball, a bouncy ball. They need to control it first. They need to under pressure play the ball to their own teammates. They get control, so you make it harder for them and get them involved in the game all the time. But can he also say what I think? What he also said is that he can the, the goalkeeper of the of the team that plays offense mm -hmm. needs to use his feet outside his D. Yeah. So he can also be a part of the of, yeah. of, of the game. Just uh, can be with the stick or maybe with the with the feet if he's as long as it's in ball position. It doesn't really matter. If you get them involved. Yeah. Uh, and that's really wise to to let the goalie be involved all the time. And yeah, of course, in an eight v eight, just like in a proper match, it can be that there's almost nothing to do. Yeah. Um, and, and you have to keep them busy all the time by communicating or get them involved in the game or throwing balls at them. Um, that's really. I think you use also like I know that uh, the team of HTC mm -hmm. from from us now, they with uh, with Paul Falas. Yeah. Uh, the, there's a the coach, former Dutch national coach. Uh, he uses his goalkeeper, Sam for the Fen, as, a, as an 11th player in the match. Yeah. So when the ball's on the sideline, they play the ball to the goalkeeper and he kicks the ball to the other side. Yeah. And because he said that the goalkeeper is so valuable in, in, in more situations. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Why not? And, 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 and he had um, uh, uh, Andreu. He had this also on Instagram. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I try to add it in the playlist. Tomorrow I'm gonna share yeah. this one together with uh, everything we have in one playlist on YouTube. And I'm gonna ask uh, Andreu if it's possible to put this in as well. Yeah. Because and otherwise I will give you the link. Yeah, otherwise we put the, the link. Yeah, I will put the link yeah. in. Yeah. We, we tried to contact him, but we couldn't get the contact with him. So. Uh, that's uh, that's okay. Um, uh, let me see. Um, what do we have more? Um, um, I think you. Uh, I you, think we are almost all the boxes. Yeah, we tick all the boxes. Wow. Um, um, questions? Questions? Because I know. Yes, we didn't show you any exercises, but we did that on purpose because we wanted to do, uh, give you a. Uh, uh, an other way of thinking and I, we hope that from there you will start thinking different in uh, using your goalkeeper during your uh, team sessions. Yeah. And uh, we are very keen in your questions. So hit, hit us. Come on. Yeah. Hit those. 
Everyone knows that there is a group chat, right? <laughs> we already asked some. Yeah. Uh, so in the bottom of Zoom, you can go and there's a, then, uh, yeah, the bottom of the screen comes up and there you can click on uh, chat if it's not open yet. Uh, and then you can talk to us privately, but it's nice to do it in, uh, to everyone. Just uh, come with your uh, questions. Questions or comments. Uh, I see, um, Jonathan, first, I love the idea of sweeper keeper. We have used it a little, and I do think it will become more important. At least I hope so. It makes it a better game, I think. But, yeah. but then you need to practice this yeah. with your goalkeeper. Yeah, definitely. Because it's, it's really lots of control, and um, it mustn't be that, that, the, uh, that the, 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 the defender on the left side says, I can't, I can't we're going to play, and he just is like the hand grenade. With yeah. no pin, he yeah. just plays his goalkeeper. Yeah, it's like uh, Ronald Johnson used to, do. <laughs> yeah. they used to do it against Pakistan, yeah. the best team. Yeah. Ronald Johnson, and what he did then was the high kick. He yeah. kicked it out of his, yeah. his circle to the yeah. other 23. Um, uh, Carolina, what's better for a goalie? Be patient or aggressive? I don't think there is. I, I think you need to do both. Yeah. Be able to do both. Yeah. But what's the situation? Yeah. Yeah. It's really hard yeah. to say. Yeah, you know, you need to be patient on the line and you need to be aggressive towards the ball. Yeah. I think and that's aggressive the, when you yeah. when it requires. Yeah. And then yeah. especially don't hesitate in between those yeah. two. Yeah. Do it full. No hesitation. Uh, Jonathan, in a typical week, what proportion of time should we train and have the keeper involved in their training? What about the keeper perspective? So for example, always with the team, but with an hour of extra individual. Um, I would say they have to be in all the team sessions yeah. um, and do Definitely. an extra hour individually. Um, but that's on the senior level, I think. They can cope with that intensity. If you look at a junior level and they're really young and they already have three sessions a week and then another extra hour of goalie training and they can cope with that, maybe it's easier to skip a team session and focus there more on technique for the team. Yeah and then skip the goalie session for the goalie yeah uh, so that goalie session for the goalie is really important and then you can focus two times a week uh, on training with your goalie yeah you can also have um, um, a second goalkeeper yeah yeah so you say you got the first junior team then maybe the the second goal is the goalkeeper of the second junior team of the of the age level yeah. he can also join the session yeah and then you got two goalkeepers or when the, uh, the goalkeeper of, uh, of your team has a goalie session, goalie training, then you, you ask a goalie of an other team to join the training so he can also raise his level. Yep, and that he also can help him to raise his level also in communicating in, yep. in the sessions. Yep. Um, Jeroen, how do you learn a goalkeeper to stand in front of the goal and move with the posts in his back and still have the best angle? Um, I'll, what I tell them is not to look at their pose too much, uh, but feel them if they are, no, they are quite close, feel them with their hands and not look over the shoulder and look at everything surrounding them. So look at the P spot, look at the top of the D. Uh, you know where the top of the D is, you know where the P spot is, so then you can put it in perspective yeah. where you are in front of your goal. Uh, even look at the 23, the corners over there. Uh, and that's a bit harder, but if you get them learning to look at that pointers in the, in, on the pitch. It's in every pitch, it's exactly the same. So look at those points, then they can learn where they are. Um, it's like if, if, you, if, if, if you have the ball as a player, uh, just outside the D, and I close your eyes, I put you somewhere, and you have to open your eyes, and you have to look at the D, you know, you feel directly where the goal box is. Yeah. Directly, because you can recognize on the D where you need to, if you enter this part, you know, there will be the goal. Yeah. It's the same for goalkeepers. Yeah. So that's something which you need to learn. Yeah. Your orientation. Yeah. 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 But don't try to let them look over the shoulders. Yeah. That's, then they Post, miss the P miss spot. The yeah. Top of the D. Yeah. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. Jonathan says, perfect. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Jonathan. Um, more questions, please. Just shoot at us. Let us know. 
if there are some more questions. Can be easy, simple questions, can be very hard, doesn't really matter, okay. just shoot at us. If you have a question, please let us know. Okay, then while thinking, uh, we would like you to make a an, uh, an session, an exercise, and you can send us to us, and, uh, and we'll take a look at it, and, and, the, and the idea is that uh, the exercise has to be made with the goalkeeper, as the most important part of your drill. Yeah. So you need to make an exercise so to improve the level of your goalkeeper, maybe on its own or with the defense. Yeah. It has to be a team session. Though. It has to be a team session. I think it's going to be nice. We're we going to send them also in the in the mail to them. Or what yeah, yeah. We, if yeah. you if you want to, we can share it as well. I can make uh, I can put them on uh, yeah. in the uh, YouTube as well. Yeah. Um, All the exercises. Yeah. 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 It's nice because then they get different views, new exercises. Yeah. So it's all about how can we make the goalkeeper better in your session, um, and then uh, it can be the goalkeeper itself. It can be the defense. Yep. It has to be, you have to think about the, the pace of the exercise, where, how do you want to start the exercise? Yep, yep. That's fun. Jonathan is very quick, he already sent us something. <laughs> said, hopefully you can open it. I can't, I think, no, I can't, I don't know why. But he, he make a picture with he, your. He, he sent it in a really weird. Is it Russian extension? No, maybe he just sent me a a, a big virus, Jonathan. <laughs> I know where you live, Jonathan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he did it a few weeks ago. Uh, uh, now just send it in an email. That's uh, yeah. that's easier. Send it afterwards in an email to us. Um, you can do it at, uh, towards uh, the, the one you got the, uh, the link from yeah. or send it to me where you got the, uh, yeah, the, the confirmation of the webinar. Yeah. So when I ask you to send in some questions, you can also send it over there. We will bundle it and we will look at it, give yeah. you some feedback. And if you want to, we can also put them online and share it with everyone. So yeah. everyone has ideas of each other. Yeah, beautiful. Good, good idea. Yeah. Okay, I had more questions, uh, my friend. Um, yeah, this one is a PDF, the other one wasn't, Jonathan. No, it's only Jonathan that's really uh, busy on the moment. Okay. <laughs> In the group chat. Um, the rest of us is enjoying weekend. Yeah, this yeah, is a PDF, and indeed I can open a PDF. Let's see. Ah, this is lovely. Okay, we'll, we'll take a look. Um, Jonathan, is it, is it okay if... Um, is it okay if I share this in the group? Just let me know. Just tell me if, uh, if that's okay. Um, Jeroen, are, extra, are there extra materials you advise to have in a team practice um, to train a goalkeeper better? Well, if you want to have more, you know, it, what, is, what, what I often uh, did was that I put two rebound boxes just on the outside of the post. So when the ball is shot wide, uh, the ball gets back into the game. Yeah. Yeah, that's or you can point. use some tires, you can put down some tires. On the next to the goal box, yeah. and the, when the ball is shot wide, it goes back again. Yeah. So you got more. And the nice thing about tires is that they stay a little bit closer, so you get them into the nine yard zone. Yeah. And then it's about yeah quickly and anticipating and yeah. watching and making decision decision making. Yeah. Um, let's see, Hein asks how. Uh, how can you try to make your goalie uh, more diving? Any good tips or exercises? Why, my question is, why do, you, why do you want him to dive? Yeah. Good because if you, if you let him dive, he has to get, then he's always one step behind because he has to get on his feet. Yeah. And diving means that you want to make 
ultimate space and we as we explained it's it's more important that you stop the stoppable balls and yes it's also nice to dive uh, but we, we we think it's very important to stay as long as possible with your feet if you want to dive you you push yourself away and you bring your hand on the same height as the ball and you just drop yeah okay definitely um yeah extra materials uh that's you also said field markers is uh, really handy yeah field markers for making the three d's yeah is really nice um yeah you can think of uh we uh, we did uh, just did a uh a webinar also about the goalkeeper equipment you can also use a lot of goalkeeper equipment uh in training sessions for let's say striker uh yeah. trainings yeah so to throw a ball into a catch it um or push it over a shark, or push it towards each other over a shark. Um, Receive both shots. Yeah, and then of course, obvious with the three Ds in mind. So where are, where am I, and how should I, should I shoot? Yeah. So never a bouncy ball with the hands together, no hands apart. Quick movement. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, so, and 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 all the exercises what I normally do with strikers is, is to touch. Yeah. It's trap shot, and they need to use the feet to find the best position and it's not trap, tap, shot or it's a trap, tap, tap, tap and then the shot. It's trap, footwork, yeah, short grip. Uh, question from Jeroen. Is it true that a split safe is more old fashioned and that the most goalkeepers now stand while making low safe? So is the footwork more important? What is your opinion on that and why is that a trend? Well, it is uh, because of the uh, the the split that was a technique that was invented in the beginning of the 70s <coughs> and that's old, old. yeah that's really yeah and um and the, there was the idea was also if you do did that you could because of the leather kickers and pads the ball dropped dead and then you could clear the ball away and now with the foam if you go as you go into a split you can touch the ball and the ball gets off the kicker, but you're lying on the ground again. Yeah, and and uh, you, you see even the top goalkeepers who try to keep as long as possible on their feet, doing this on the real ultimate balls, but that's, that's when they are under pressure. Yeah. And um, yeah, and it requires a lot of footwork. Yeah, deal with it. And that's, if you look at, uh, if you look at, at tennis, where you where a serve has been played with 200 kilometers per hour, they can use their feet to reach the ball. If you look at squash, if you look at uh, basketball, if you look at ice hockey, handball, everything is footwork, 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 footwork. Yeah, yeah this is our opinion. And uh, they're all also different styles, and they say you have to take less steps, but that's that's the difference in in philosophy yep. and not about good or bad but that's the way it is i hope it was a good answer for you uh jonathan said uh, did a session with mark hickman the other day you 100 percent agreed about staying on his feet and talked quite a bit about moving less and making sure that all the stoppable sa uh, stoppable saves were saved consistently yeah uh, clever man mark hickman yeah man. um He's the, he's, he's, the, he's the goalie coach of GB. Yeah. To the, uh, Perfect. Yeah. We totally agree with, uh, yeah. with him. Uh, Mark said already uh, something. Perfect. He was already working on it. Jeroen said thanks for the answer. Yes, thanks. That's a good answer. Um, great. Yeah, everyone that wants our opinion about uh, uh, an exercise that they're already working on uh, or now has some inspiration yeah. to, to get an exercise out of their hands and write down uh, please do so and want our opinion about it just share it with us yeah. and we will get back on you and uh, then I also ask if you want to share it with the entire group so now the, I don't know how much we're in it today uh, we share it with everyone uh, and we put it in that group and everyone can learn from each other yeah. that's a nice thing so okay. we get everyone together and learn as one big group yeah one big community community yeah. community okay um, I want to thank you all for this uh, for your time. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope that we gave you 
a new way of thinking how you can use your goalkeeper in your session. And uh, yes, you need to think of your own session, but if you, I think with sharing these exercises, you will get, you'll, you'll get really creative. From one exercise, you can make at least five or 10 new ones. Yeah. Um, if you get questions, let us know. Thank you so much. And I uh, hope to see you next week in our next webinar about decision the decision-making of the goalkeeper. And we wish you a beautiful weekend. Stay at home, stay safe, stay healthy, be friendly for the people around you. And uh, see you soon. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Ciao. And meeting. You too stay safe. Jonathan, thanks.